God has an expectation. God has a plan to see his expectation met. But a generation must come in alignment. And we say yes to Jesus. Ibarasya tabo meka baba kamande kaidatos. We will all know in Jesus. You want a generation. We offer you on. Let the waitings come to an end. Holy Spirit, we now wait on you. There is nothing more that we can do. Send your power now and set the captives free. Holy Spirit. verses from verse 20 to verse 28 church this reading is supposed to be a journey and I want to plead with you that you open your heart to these truths that are captured in Paul's 
epistle to the Colossian church. Maybe I need to add this, that the reason why it pleased the Lord that these letters be captured in scriptures is because what he said to the Colossian church through Paul is relevant for us. There are truths that we are designed to embody and live by. There is a call to something beyond mental knowing. And it is that everything that is truly known should be pressed into until an experience is born. That's the design. That's the design. I want to trust the Lord that the advertisements of the Christ which are captured in scriptures as glory will become our experiences in the name of Jesus. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 20 to 28. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled not just things in heaven and things in the earth, but you were also reconciled. When the blood of the Christ was deployed, one of the imports of the shedding of his blood beyond cleansing is that the blood was designed to occasion reconciliation. An account statement needed to be balanced. You began in God and you were on the other side because of the error of Adam and your own errors. But when his blood was paid, the sides were changed. You were brought back to the side of God. Reconciliation communicates restoration. Having paid what is due. Amen. Am I simple enough? So, the blood was paid to reconcile everything in heaven and everything in the earth, including you, Peter. And the Bible gives us a picture in the 21st verse what your former state was you were alienated it means you were estranged from God you were also an enemy and you are an enemy not just a physical thing but in your mind your soul which is the which what which is what plays host to your mind was operating against the intentions of God was operating against the designs of God you are an enemy in your mind by wicked works. Yet, now hath he reconciled. It gives you an organic experience of salvation. Next verse, 22. In the body of his flesh, now he reconciled you. Let's, let's read from 21 to 22 because he stretched it. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled, give me, in the body of his flesh through death. To what end? To present you holy. The word holy there is consecrated. You were removed from every other purpose. And now you have been established in devotion to God alone. Holy and unblameable. That means in no aspect can we say, ha, ah, blessing, see, see your life, see your life. No. Because you are now above blame and unreprovable. It means there's no aspect of your existence 
that we can query as being on, on, uh, in upright or unrighteous. You have passed beyond the dimensions of rebuke. And what Paul is bringing to us here is in his sight. It's a legal expression. That's how God sees you. It does not mean that the believer behaves well all the time. But there's a way God currently sees you. Not because of how you responded, but based on what Jesus did. It is saying to us that when we begin to express in the fullness of what the Christ has occasioned for us, all of us will have been presented to God holy. Not just legally, but experientially. That I will not catch you dancing booger. Because Bukhar does not advance the cause, the cause of God. And there's an evil under the sun. One of the platforms where I've seen that TV is on Facebook. There's something they call real. And many times when, when I have time, maybe I post something and I have another two, three minutes, I just scroll. I see some of, our, some of us that I don't, I'm not that tech savvy. There's a way you can match a song and your picture. Are you with me? When I see the songs that some, some, some people who, who claim to be witnesses of the Christ, you see Kiss Daniel, you see this thing, and I'm wondering, uh, what else do you want us to say? The reason why some could not maximize the promise of God in the wilderness was that they were unbelieving, their hearts were hard. Do you think we're lying? No, because maybe we should do town hall meeting one of these days. No, you know what they do in town hall meeting? It's not just somebody speaking. Every okay in church they call it family meeting, and we should tell ourselves the truth. Let us ask you: Why are you not changing? Is it that we are not we are lying to you, or you just how can you be comfortable expressing the world and you say that you're of Christ? It shouldn't be that easy. Do they put cons to people's heads to post a song that is not God and your picture and you are shaking to it? Is do they is it by is it a con? How can we trust you to stand for Jesus if they put a gun on your head? You have compromised without pressure. When there's pressure, would you remain? Their whole church is that will be empty because they have not been raised to stand for anything. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one who is frustrated. You say WC and stay, it still gives me a little bit of convenience. However, I know people more than they think I know them. You should be surprised at the kind of sermons I'm preaching. Because normally we should have outgrown some things. Abi? Eh. But me, I know people. A true leader does not talk all the time. He gives you time to adjust. But you can't be like this here. And you be like that there. An end must come to double standards. Don't, we are not saying be writing Jesus on your page like I write on my own. We know you are afraid that we lose some friends if you do that so much. So we don't want to rock your boat. But we are just saying that if God is making his intentions known to you in the manners that we have been receiving, you will need to have locked your heart not to be on the path of change. Everywhere this boy goes to, by the mercy of God, from motor park to airport, I have people stop me everywhere. They don't stop to give me money. But they want to know, are you? Are you? The last time I was trying to bat my air, you know, it was I saw a lady looking in my direction, so I just waved, oh, God bless you. And said, I'm not looking for anything. So I walked into the barbing salon. All of a sudden, the lady came after a while and walked in and said, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. You look like somebody that I know. Are you Reverend Tulu Angola? It was like a gold mine. Ah, I, I, 
been listening to you and, and I wanted to say a few things. I said, well, it's not a problem. I have a WhatsApp line that everybody can have and reach me. She said, you mean I can have your number? I'm not God now. Somebody was in my hotel room. A brother was in my hotel room on Friday night. I said, sit down. The guy knelt down. I said, sit down. He knelt down. I said, ah. He will sit down. When he wants to talk, he wants to kneel down. I said, ah. I said, Me, I'm not like that. Too. I, said, I, I always say it. I'm a regular person. I'm a regular person. If you know how anointed you are, there are some people you don't respect again. I don't mean that when we, we are mutually anointed, we should not respect ourselves. I'm just saying that the every person thinks that God was partial giving some good things. There are many things you have that you have not you have not been able to push out, or the season has not come. You may find out that the ones you are bowing your head for now are the ones who will be looking for you to bow their heads to you when what is in you matures and in the name of Jesus what Jesus has planted in you will mature I said sit down so, so he said ah, ha, sa, sa. you know when you eventually meet somebody I don't know what to say I said calm down talk to me his wife was with us man sit down she said no no I said sit down sit down if you don't sit down I will not talk he says I don't know how how long, how long? I've been praying that this day will come. Which day? To meet who? Ah, I'm not Michael Jackson now. But there are a lot of testimonies that people give outside this our group about change. About change. One of our sisters was sharing with me and my wife that, you know, when she went for service, she didn't tell us. And if she's hearing, she didn't tell us. It's not a problem, child. We are not that. We are not that possessive. Me, I shall just did not see her again, and then we got to know that she had gone for youth service. When she now got to youth service, she found out that in every room that she entered to peep to do something, there was a sound that was she was used to that she was hearing. Ha, all of you hear this person, hear this person, hear this person. Are you not a? Uh, is that not reverend? Is that not reverend? Is that not reverend? Is that not reverend? And they said yes, yes, yes. And she said, I mean, I know him now. This is our daddy. They said, no. You mean you have seen this person before? And I'm wondering. She said instantly, the way they acted around her changed instantly. That says you that we need prayer. It's you that if there's a problem, that's where they go. It's you that will teach us the Bible. One of those times I traveled, one of the receptionists paid money. To one of the protocol officers paid money somebody say paid money let me meet him he was not to sleep with him that in our school i've been hearing about your name is this you sir like one word of prayer the person paid money the mercy of god has allowed this little that we know to change lives hwc and we should begin to bear the fruits of these utterances because if you go out and claim that you are associated with us and you arrive, they will push you into a place and if they see you function contrary, they will know that you don't, you have not embodied the spirit of the house. To mention AWCN now is to set yourself up for performance. Wake up. It is time that we begin to align with the words that come forth. God is producing a new man and by mercy he exposes us to timely emphasis so that we can press into what he's doing. Even in preparing to come to preach I get rebuked the course of my life gets altered. I mean that God is talking to me. So my life is being changed even in preparing sermons. I go back to listen to myself many times you are around where my sister was around on Tuesday how many times did she say she listens to some sermons 15 times she's a cerebral person no? based on my interactions with her she's, she's very intelligent she said it she she's like a straight A's person 15 times 15 times there was something she was going through and she said 
okay so how do i manage this i said well i have a bank of messages for you to manage that because i preached a lot of that aspect i sent her like eight sermons so when she listened to the first one she felt okay uh, which what which ones did you preach before this one because it looks at like this one we choke me let, let me start from we are not saying we are good we are just saying that god has been merciful to us and so we should take advantage of his mercy and live lives that are commensurate with what we are eating tell me if you are feeding somebody with chocolate every day chocolate is eating shawarma is eating what else do people eat is is eating pizza is eating bananas i see they say bananas used to help the body too is eating plenty things and it remains thin you know we'll become worried if it was in nigerian yoruba film will say that their spirits inside him that they are, they are open as he's eating they are opening their mouths and they're the ones eating if there are people out there who don't hear what we hear and because they don't hear what we hear they are the way they are we should not hear what we hear and still be like them our lives should challenge them it should provoke compliance that's the burden for the hour There is a way God sees us because of the sacrifice of the Christ. Verse 23. Verse 23. If ye continue in the faith. Now, let's go back to verse 22. I want to pick it from a point. So, yes, we're reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight he puts a column because he wants to explain that status he knows that somebody can grab that thing and run so he says next verse if it means you sustain that that kind of outlook before god if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard it means if a man loses touch of faith loses his grounding becomes unsettled and is moved away from the hope of the gospel god will see you differently which you have heard and which was preached not just to you but to every creature which is under heaven whereof i paul was made a minister as 24 who now rejoice so Paul is speaking about himself in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind another translation says that which is left because legalities have been fulfilled the organics need to be up, up need to be updated fill up that which is left of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake paul is saying i'm suffering because jesus has suffered to make available i must suffer to make accessible fill up that which is behind of my afflictions of christ in my flesh for his body's sake which is the church whereof i am made a minister according to the dispensation of god which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God verse 26 even the mystery he begins to give us a picture of some, one, something that needs fulfillment of the word of God even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations it means before our age this mystery had been locked it was a wonder in god but god had locked it and many generations had come god had hid the mystery was existing but it was hidden hid from ages and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints it means it's now open revelation when we speak of mysteries they are not things that god has hid from us 
there are things that he has hid for us because there is an appointed time in god for the manifestation of every mystery when the mystery becomes a revelation paul is saying balloon this thing has been exposed to us to his saints verse 27 we're almost done this sense to whom god will make known that's the word reveal what is the riches of the glory of this mystery and we may need to slow down a little because of the construction it says to this sense the sense of the christ because it, the bible did not say the saints it means it's not for people who call themselves saints but his saints those that he has sanctified are you with me it is to these people god will make known will reveal what is the riches the word riches there is the word abundance that the saints will come into the knowledge of the abundance of the glory of that mystery that mystery was a portion glory in god there are realities that are locked up in that mystery the advertisements precious things many streams of experiences that are locked up in that mystery the sum of the glory but god now will make us know not one stream of the glory of that mystery but the abundance of it all of it among the gentiles that if we send you one two things one is that if we send you to a place where they don't know god if this mystery has been activated not just by mental knowledge but by experience when the gentiles see you you will become a wonder to them because your life becomes or gives off the 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 rays of this mystery have you have you been walking in the darkness before and maybe it's all dark outside and then you knock your friend's door maybe it's an airtight door and when your friend opens the door a little what do you see you see light coming from inside like when the when clouds hide the sun you see at the edges of the cloud you see the rays of the sun that's how the gentiles will be wondering what what kind of person is this during this my last trip i encountered god as in his mind reading dimension and i was afraid The first time it happened was the lucky it happened in lorry too my protocol person i had only one in lagos and it was because the hotel was far from was a little bit far from the venue so it was the one that followed the driver to pick me and all of that so he, he said sir i want to see you before i go i said okay it's not a problem we've been walking around after my last session can we see as he was going away God said, I'll give him babies. Ah, I, I'm not sure he was wearing a ring. So I was asking in my heart, you give him babies. Babies for He said he wants to see me. And when people want to see me like that, normally is ah, sir. You know, after listening to two sermons, the average person says, Ah, sir. God says that. <laughs> As you submit to you, <laughs> you see, I just walk away from you like that. If he calls me for the next one month, so if you have been calling me for the next one month, it's my strategy. I may not answer you for a year. If you trouble me, I will tell you, say, Okay, sir, mentor me. I have mentorship material. This thing, the way I'm teaching, is how a mentor should school somebody. So, my sermons are mentorship material, and there are plenty. It means from this last one week, let's say from Sunday to yesterday, you will have three sermons from Sunday. You will have one from Tuesday, ritually one. You will have two from Thursday. You will have two from Friday. You will have three from Saturday. But I should still sit and say, you know that Michael means might of God. No, no, you, you are not nice. You should not be that wicked because 
the wickedness of your mind has been sorted. I don't think that the shining, the radiance of a minister should be enough conviction that you should submit to that person. But shallow. The second thing I run away from is that I minister for one hour and a pastor slips a note to me and says, Sir, God is saying that you minister in our convention. I will say, ha, 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 ha. He said, how you are? You don't know me now. I can package myself and preach well and be a wicked man. I'm battling now is that everybody people can no longer invite you for a meeting Pastor Diola and say sir we just we feel that you should come for our conference they say we were in prayers it, it has to be delivered like a parcel from, 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 from God we were in prayers and God convinced us that you are the one that is supposed to come and bring the word of life On a day that God has convinced me to be somewhere else, you see, we Kibala, we can be simple. I'm not saying that God cannot send some people, but sometimes, as the thing is being delivered, girl, me, ma, I know that. Okay, you want me to come for your meeting, and it's not a problem. I tell you instantly, don't just say July. Do you have a date? Bring the date. I'm going to go before God. But don't disturb me after two hours to say, are you coming? I'm not designed to be that shallow. There's really no conference I'm being called to come to now that I've not preached along that line before. Those who are close to me know that God does not permit me to preach a sermon. Yet. So if you invite me to preach... The power that is at work in us. And after two months, you invite me to preach the power that is at work in us. I'll deliver a totally different sermon. Because they are new every month. So same topic does not, does not give me... Does not bring ease to me. It actually gives me more problems. Because I will need to upgrade knowledge. To be able to meet the demands of the new conference. Somebody say ministry is labor. Uh, you are not saying it well now. The way I'm saying it is how to labor to be rewarded. If you labor like that, you will not have time to be chasing the reward. Because if you are working for somebody that is good, you will not be thinking too much about salary. Eh. Abijibola, if your boss is a good person, you will not be thinking too much about some No, you will face your work and do it. Knowing that as that went you, you'll be paid. This mystery that had been hidden was a portion and advertisement. It was gifted radiance in God. It had the ability to distinguish the possessor from every other person. It had the ability to distinguish the companies that play hosts to its revelations from every other person you cannot have touched it and its essence not distinguish you you will be different if this mystery is activated you don't know it if you have not become different what is that mystery the mystery the bible says which is Christ in you the hope of glory Somebody say Christ in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Verse 28 is our verse of engagement for the month of September. Our labor is around this ancient mystery that God has hid from ages and generations before us a mystery that he has chosen to reveal to us in our own generation a generation that a, a mystery that was not revealed in parts 
but was revealed in all of his robustness so that the possessor can come into all of the radiance of that mystery which is Christ in you the hope of glory verse 28 speaking of Christ whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ let's begin our journey now there are realities that are occasioned or maybe I should begin this way to say that the testimony of being saved captures two basic experiences first is that a man gives his life to Christ why is that the first it is because in Titus 2 11 the Bible tells us that the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men it means at best what the Christ does at the place where the event of salvation takes place is that he appears as God's way out a man activates what he brings what the Christ brings which is salvation by subscription are you with me so he appears before you and because of the word of faith that you have heard you commit your life into his hands so one of those first experiences or those two experiences is that you give your life to Christ if you have not given your life to Christ then you are not saved but you see, giving your life to Christ is not the only experience that, de that, that defines uh, you know, common salvation. It is also that Christ was received. You received Christ. You received Christ. So it's a, it's a giving and a reception. It is on that ground that we say that the testimony of the man who is saved is not the testimony of a changed life. It is the testimony of an exchange you gave and you took are you with me Jesus cannot dwell in your heart if there was nothing to give this is praise have you am I right yes how's your brother okay still out what's your own okay good okay it was two of you that were around that time too I promised you something I've not given you. So remind me. Are you around around? Eh, we'll try and sort it this week. So, it's the testimony of an exchanged life. I gave him my life. And he gave me his own. So Paul in Galatians 2.20 was giving us a picture of the transaction. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But now Christ lives where? In me. I, I am my same body, but I run a new operating system. And the new operating system is the living Christ or the indwelling Christ. He now said, if you see me, the life that I now live is still in my mortal body. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So that's the testimony of the believer. Okay having said that i want to say that there are realities that now begin to express in the life of that one who has received jesus because he gave himself to jesus there are realities their experiences experiences where you cannot get sorry i mean experiences that you cannot get by any other means um, if you run and you become thirsty what will you cry out for if you are me I'll cry out for cold water but you see where there's no cold water we can administer cold coke 
cook is not even it's not even a good substitute let's say those those um lesser gaseous maybe fanta good but you see in actual fact to a thirsty man fanta is just a gap standard you can't total, forget the advertisement what do they put the advertisement uh, they, they they make it look as if those things can quench your test maybe seven of seven of is even wrong to quench test <laughs> yeah, but you know there's a way there's a way i walk seven of pepsi that it can that it gives me a near test quenching feeling is that i shake it so much and then open the cap you don't open the cap for it to go you shake it once it bubbles you allow the bubbles to go up you open it they calmly go down back into the bottle so the gas goes what you'll be drinking will just be sweet water that's all no no gas so it, it near quenches your test you can go and try it it works all the time but i'm saying that when it comes to quenching test cook i'm um, sorry water was designed to quench thirst. The refreshing that water brings, no other liquid can bring it. The one who comes into Christ, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, therefore must understand that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And after the word new creature, give me the verse. What what um punctuation mark is there? What punctuation mark? Now what what does a full colon mean? Or a colon, the other one is a semicolon. What does it mean? It means we want to explain. So Paul in his writing wanted the Corinthian church to know why the man in Christ is a new creature. It's not because he thinks that he's a new creature. It's not because he feels that he's a new creature. He's a new creature because there are a new set of things that is brought to interface with. The Bible says that all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It means if you are still interfacing with the old things, it is false to claim that you are in Christ. Are you with me? This was how I entered my impartation service yesterday morning. And Jesus was upon us. I was teaching that we must be able to list the number of things the number of things because what God told me in the hotel room into yesterday morning was that he was going to clothe us and I was making them understand that dummy you were not there shall but that dummy call my wife this night call my wife this night Good, this night um that if I bring a new garment for you. It's not about a garment to call my wife. If I bring a new garment for you, no matter how great that garment is, even if it is decked in diamonds, you won't change here. Happy? Even if you feel, ah, it's so fine, let me change it. I, I, I trust my sisters. What would they do? They will, they will grab you and they are just taking you to a changing room, but I know that their lips will not be shut. They will be muttering tongues as they are going that Lord, whatever has occasioned this thing must die before we arrive. So there he used to sell jeans trousers. Abby? Abby? So whether you are watching online or anywhere, if you want to buy good jeans trousers, please patronize Brother Jerry. You will pay me for this advert. Okay. So Jerry brings a, a nice jean trouser. And you say, Guy, this trouser. And you quickly start doing your belt on the stage here. I know if I do that, Oba will not shout. He will first tap me down. You're on stage. So I was telling them that when God wants to clothe, He takes men into a changing room. How do we know there's such a place, there's such a dimension where people have? whose garments are chained is because one of the things that we come into the experience of as the new creature is the, is the reality of places in the spirit so that you see your supplies does not come from everywhere 
there is a location where your supplies are drawn from paul in responding to the church that gave to him he said my god shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory in christ jesus he names the bank the bank is located within an ecosystem so you can say zenith bank at um no at a starlight so the starlight there the geographical location is christ jesus but the hub of supplies his glory it's a place it's a place so there are places in the spirit and these places are designed to occasion specific realities in a house there are places no matter how much you want to wee wee you can you can go to the kitchen and pull out the pot and wee wee there even though your pot and potty bear the same their names are close and now uh, I mean, pot and pot. And one is just an extension of the other one. But if you make that mistake, you will not be able to recover from it. Because if you are a child, you will still bear the scars. And so, the, 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 the place called the toilet has a set of realities. I know for some people, the, store, the toilet is a prayer room. The toilet is even a study room. The toilet is largely a very revelatory room. I know it can also be a praying room for some people it's a worship room they stay long because they don't sing in any other place until until water touches them then they begin to sing okay I know you can sleep in the city room but the place that is crafted for sleep is where it's a bedroom the room has the name of the major furniture there attached to the name of the room in the same way there are places in God and the church must be made to understand that many times when God drops a desire in our heart in fulfilling that desire we will need to travel we need to travel so we traveled yesterday for four minutes and when we entered the room if you walked into that meeting it was obvious that the realities of a room had been occasioned because God came and began to clothe me so when we say these things we are not trying to be spooky there are things that we should know it doesn't happen like that in every place there are places to arrive at even when you study your bible understand that the reason why you don't understand sometimes is that you are reading from a place where understanding cannot happen you have to join what was the song i sang yesterday sir? oh secret place sing again i can't do that song if i'm already feeling the anointing very strong on my head but i was just humming that song humming that song after a while so that we could arrive early then god gave me a sound i can't even remember the sound but i want the keyboardist my daughter jewel was around so be singing that sound be singing that sound say oh god play what i'm playing you know because we need to arrive early these things we speak of are you see is because the reason why we function like that is not because we are strong it's because we are the new creature all things are passed away you should be given new tools if you were into catering before your tools should be a pot what's that what do they call that big thing in your bag that they now is gas it used to be eh? no in english in english eh? no no co-pot he used that is eh? It's like a gas burner, but that that make you know that mega gas burner, and they put pots on. You know it now, eh? You said, oh yeah, now. Uh, if you say three pot stand, this is one three pot stand too now. No, a three pot stand is a stand that has three legs. Abby, mind yourself. Yes, now. Even this speaker is standing on a tripod stand. She shall know that gas thing. Uh-huh. I, I, you see, I've forgotten what I want to say about the gas thing. Good. If you are a caterer, 
you'll be gifted that casting. You should have a big pot where you can cook for like a hundred people. You have those tools. If the next day you become a mechanic, a tripod that your tripod stand, what I call it is a giant gas burner. If you know the name, you can furnish out with it, but it's not tripod stand. If you have that giant gas burner, it's not an advantage for you as a mechanic. It can be an additional tool that in your mechanic joint, you have somebody who fries bones as, as they are preparing the car. So it's a, it's, it's a side hustle. It's, it's, it's not the core thing. You must have a set of spanners. Am I right? Yes. You must have overalls that will not have been, that will have been out of place if you were a ketra your gloves will change the engineering gloves are different the shoes you know, you can't wear those boots to be to be cooking are you with me so every time you come into a new shape of existence there is the requirement that there are new things that you come into the proof that you have switched identity is that there's a new set of things that you're working with i want to ask us what is new in your life since you got saved because for the average believer it's just mental i'm saved say this guy you see the lie like before say is your business so i move still are so brash they will even say is your lie it's not my lie it's your own if you're asking it in your mind, it's your lie. It's your lie. And I hope you have not read scriptures far to know that liars have de destiny. So the desire for change must be high in our hearts because salvation was not designed to be fully expressed mentally. There was an experience that was attached to it. I've said all of this to prove that there are some things that cannot be occasioned outside Christ dwelling in you. The star has light, but you have never felt the heat of a star before. And may you not feel it. Uh, or county people can manipulate the star and make it generate heat. You know when the moon shines in the night, you think the moon has no no energy but the psalmist understood how what mysterious men can do so he said the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night you think smiting is heat oh david was a man of understanding others two priesthood that you can use this the 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 this the moon to oppress people But you see, based on the creation of those those light bodies hoisted up in the firmaments, um, the sun is in a class of its own. None generates heat like the sun. It means you cannot occasion the heat of the sun from any other route. I'm establishing that blessing. Whatever is in a man will give forth the realities of that man. You cannot replicate the realities of the indwelling Christ. It means if it's not there, it's not there. If he's there, therefore you should labor to give him room so that he expresses himself. So this subject, I'm going to teach it under three subtopics. No subtopic or don't re subtitle my sermon. Leave it there. But three subtopics. One will be Christ's entrance. And if you like, Christ's incoming. Christ's incoming and the incoming of the Christ so colon Christ's incoming colon you can write the wonder of conversion so when Christ comes what you expect to see is the wonder of conversion two is Christ's indwelling and that's the core for this part of the series the measures of consecration what we expect is that if Christ lives inside you 
you will be increasing in consecration the third is that the one who lives does not want to, or the one who dwells does not want to dwell as an end he wants to feel so Christ's the third will be Christ's in feeling the wonder of compassion it is the infilling of the Christ that releases the energy of God to other people the wonder of compassion I said the first is what Christ's incoming let's call it incoming the wonder of conversion not salvation but conversion two is what Christ's indwelling that's what the measures or if you like the you can call it the intensification of consecration the intensification increasing measures of consecration the third is Christ's in feeling he enters he wants to leave then he wants to occupy every room once he occupies every room you come into the ministry what do I call the third one? The wonder of compassion or the ministry of compassion. Now you can release the energy because until the cup is full, there's no flow. So let's go one by one. Help us, Lord Jesus. There's a song that came to my heart today. After okay, it's back now. He says, Oh, what a wonderful. Wonderful day, day I will never forget. Follow my pace. After I've wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, oh, what a tender compassionate friend he met the needs of my heart the shadows dispelling real joys I am telling he made all the darkness depart help me sing heaven came down oh heaven came down and lo my soul oh down at the cross down at the cross my savior me behold my sins were washed away my sins were washed away and my night was on Heaven, heaven came down and glory fills my soul. One more time, heaven, heaven came down. So heaven came down and glory fills my soul. Hey, down at the cross and down at the cross. My Savior, be your Hey, I'm an anoka sata malaria kaduka. My sins were washed away, and my night was dark. Today, heaven. What we need to find our time with more meaning. Shade Masaya do Kamaria, Velo heaven, heaven came down, glory fills my soul. Oh, when at the cross he made me whole, my Savior. I'm not the only 
Thank you, Jesus. No matter how big the sins were, my sins were washed away.
when we begin to speak of the entrance of the Christ which is the first gift that the believer receives it is designed to provoke gratitude because in the in, in, in Paul's te, um, testimony of the reality of this entrance as given to the Colossian church like where we read from give me verse 21 again verse 21 let's turn it from there Colossians 1 21 Paul speaking of us the church seeks to remind us first of where we came from that we were an estranged people we could not breathe in God or unto God our hearts could not pant after God every attempt to reach God will end in futility because by location we were away from him by passion we were distracted from him and so he said that we were sometime alienated it is this one who was alienated this one who was an enemy in his mind that God graciously because of subscription gifted the Christ when you called him Lord a gate opened in your heart and a fellowship of the Christ began with your spirit this is what we describe as the incoming of the Christ and your first accurate response is gratitude it's like an enemy gave you goodness but beyond gratitude there is the need to labor in gratitude i want to explain myself i've said to us many times i think the first place i said it was rcf university of learning it was their world conference sometime last year or so and what i said i crafted it this way i said thank you jesus is not designed to be the greatest expression of gratitude to Jesus. Your greatest expression to Jesus for anything done towards you is that you live for him. So a life of gratitude is greater than words of gratitude. Even in our Yoruba experience or human expressions, you know there are some thank yous that you repeat after that person somebody gives you something or you give somebody something and then you now say why are you repeating it because you can't match utterance and countenance am I saying something there is an expectation sometimes there's nothing on the face you do something big for somebody and he says thank you and he's walking away and you say thank you like ah is that all well i'm saying the last time you said thank you maybe you didn't wait to hear god say thank you is that all that we say because the last time some people showed gratitude to god for the gift of the christ was when they said thank you there is nothing in their existence that appreciates that gift if somebody gives you a car one of the ways to be grateful is that you don't wreck the car. That every time the person sees it, he can say, Ah! You are using this car well. You, you know I didn't buy my car. How many of you know I didn't buy it? I've not bought any. I bought, the first one was a gift. The second one was a gift. It was a, a gift of encouragement for my parents, my biological parents. So when you pray, pray for them for blessing your pastor. Pray, pray, pray. How many of you will pray? Ah, somebody want to pray. Oh, please pray, pray, pray. In case you forget to pray, you can pray your prayer now. You know, when some people say, I will be praying for you, know that you have, you have missed prayer in that area. Don't go to sleep on their prayer. So if you want to pray, pray now. It's, it's just a word. Lord bless them. Lord keep them. No, no, that's it. Good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm saying that the life that God gave some people, they wrecked the life that God is not proud of giving them. That was the case in Genesis chapter 6. The Bible said God repented that he made man. But, ah! Oh! 
know see what this thing has become the bible said because man was evil in all of his thoughts and everything he did was evil i didn't create you like this so the gift of gratitude the utterance of gratitude is how we begin our journey in gratitude but beyond the utterance of gratitude is a life of gratitude and the life of gratitude is the life that pleases god you were living a life that displeased him before it means you will need to go through a process that makes your life one lived in gratitude and the process is what we call the process of conversion it's supposed to be the major import the major product of the incoming of the christ that when christ comes into a man that man cannot be the same he's not just safe he's also converted there is proof that change has happened now um if we plug this keyboard to the light coming from the socket it will blow this keyboard Abby? so this your is it plug you call that thing that black thing the plug at the end of your power cable is called a converter it is designed to convert what current flows in the world see if you want to say it mention your name first <laughs> so because i can't remember what current flows in the world ac or dc eh? No, first pronounce your name. If you are sure, raise your hand. Where are the electrical people? Okay. So, my what? Everybody knows you. So, is it AC or DC? Eh? AC. Okay. What flows in a battery? DC. It means that the keyboard is designed to operate by direct current. Are you with me? But what flows in the world is in the wall is alternating current. It means if you run alternating current directly into the keyboard, it will blow it. So the keyboard, the head that connects with the wall, is proficient to operate as a converter. That's why if your keyboard, if the head blows, you can't just cut any plug head and put it there. It's supposed to convert alternating current to direct current. So the power is entering the keyboard like it's a battery that is powering it. Are you with me? In the same way, there's a life you used to live. I know you didn't steal. I know, but you lied. I know you did not commit fornication of adultery. But you see, even if you were pie, even if you were morally upright, morality does not qualify. You need to pass through, because it is not by power, it is not by might. It has to be by his spirit. And you see, his spirit doesn't power morality. It powers Christ likeness. Are you with me? I'm saying blessing. I know blessing you are a good person. No, my wife speaks highly about you. I'm serious. You, you don't know. Uh, she speaks very highly about you. So, um, you are a very good person. And we appreciate your being good. You know, I always say it. But, if your goodness is traceable to home training, then your goodness is not approved of God. There should be something that is at work in your life that is superior to home training. I know you have home training. You, I know. From the first time I saw you, I know you have not Abina, yes. But you see, at your best expressions, or let me put it this way, your best expressions is not supposed to be a byproduct of home training. Because the Holy Spirit operates higher than home training. When you meet who have home training, they should be able to say blessing. Uh -uh. We know they trained you well, but what is this thing about? that's what we're talking about a conversion we used to sing one song well the the word there is great change but we know it's exchange but assume that what you're hearing me sing is exchange the song says there's a great change since I met God there's a great change since I met God, there's a great change. It's exchange I hear you. 
Since I met God, there's a great change since I met the Lord. So he now explains the great change. He says the things I used to do, I do them no more. That's what the song said. That's the reality. But actually, in expression, it should be the things I used to do. I can't do them no more. Because your operating system has changed. Are you with me? So you can't for it to be diff- it should be difficult to lie. It should be difficult to lie because your prison system that powers lying is gone. So if you want to lie now, it, you you should be caught. If you still lie successfully now, and you know the way some people lie, there are these males. When I used to work in the corporate world, we used to if if we want to deal with an issue, what we open up is a male trail. It means everything that you want to say about that issue, you must just be replying and replying and replying. So sometimes we have over 200 males trying to solve the same problem. The reason why you must maintain the trail is so that nobody will take us back if we have solved to 0.7 out of 10. Somebody who has not participated before comes and says, so what's the name of the client? Oh God, we, have, we have sold the house. So we just say, reply into the mail trail. Some people, they tell training lies like that. That if they say one, and they're about to get them, ah, but you know that, ah, you're wondering what they ah. They have ready-made lies. The lies, you, you, you know what, where the name ready-made came from? That instead of going to the tailor and waiting for them to sew, the word ready-made means already made. It means, it's just buy and move. Some people have ready made lies. That once there's a problem, they pull one. Once you want to 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 to, to catch them red-handed, they, they have access. They'll just lay lies. And when people lie to me like that, I enjoy it. That's okay. Okay, 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 okay. When I want to help them, I, I don't if you know somebody's lying to you. It, it humbles them by saying, you know, I know you're lying. I just tell them, shall I be saying the truth? Just, just leave it there. Let, let your heart convict you if I lie or not. It's not everybody that can be lied to successful. There's a spirit in man. Hey, there's a spirit in man. So we're saying that it should be difficult to lie. It should be difficult to steal. It should be easy to walk past what is not your own. It should be hard to fornicate. It should be easy to walk past temptation. Because you have a new operating system. All this one that our Christian life is built around the brazen altar. I will do something wrong and say, God, we're sorry. It's a sin offering. That's the only offering that's activated for some people. All the time. Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. God knows that in two hours time the young man will approach they have never approached the throne of grace for strength to do the will of God they always approach to say I'm sorry, forgive me, forgive me after a while they lose they lose they lose the weight after a while they don't even say I'm sorry again they just move on if you are like that this series is for you and God will show mercy so there's an old what I'm talking about is something that features very well in what they call the old time religion they are the ones that use those terminologies conversion that when you come to church because in the ideal when you come to church and give your life to Christ today you shouldn't sing in our choir I'm not saying when you join our church because we believe that God is in many places so if you have been saved and you have started a process somewhere, we don't need to rebaptize you because you came here. That I think is a mockery of the whole essence of baptism. Because baptism is not baptism into a ministry. It's into Christ. If it has, I was baptized in the Baptist ministry and I'm baptized. Are you with me? But I'm saying that there's this haphazard entrance into service that we give to people who have not been converted. 
they bring their old realities and they mix with the things and God becomes diff it becomes difficult for God to move In the old time religion, when somebody is saved, they subject them to very tough discipleship. And the discipleship is not designed to furnish any cerebral knowing. It's that we want to make you know what you what decision you just took and the possibilities that are there. And we expect that with every new revelation, there's an embodiment. Must send us ministers who are bridges between the old and the new. Many of them, because the way this new is going, without the energies of the old, without the destruction of the old, without the consecration of the old, it will shipwreck, the, it will shipwreck itself. It doesn't need the enemy to attack it, it's on a path of self destruction. We used to sing a song when we're in, in, in fellowship that time. That time was where the small ones in fellowship. We say, Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old. I have not heard it before. I, I will call that now because I know that is old time religion. Yes, and that's where safety is. It was good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas. It's good enough for me. So give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough. One more time. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. The song says it was good for Paul and Silas. Is that is that Pauline thing that we want? Not this modern one that, that is only beautiful but lacks but lacks purity, lacks power. People want fire. They don't know that the fire touches impurity and burns it. I said it in London yesterday. You want revival. The need in revival is life. We want God to send us. How can you want? Does God send dead men? Wait for life. Ezekiel 47, the need was a great, was an exceedingly great army. Ezekiel 47:10. Am I right? Yes. But there was a process. For 7, 10. Yes. No. Ezekiel. No. 37. Yes. 37, 10. 37, 10. Yes. An exceeding great army. Okay. Ezekiel 37 is the valley of dry bones. 47 is the waters in layers. Okay. So. The need here was the emergence of an exceeding great army. But they didn't start by putting fire on them. The bones first need to be brought together. Because the bones are already dry. And when you speak of dry bones, you speak of a company of people who, are, who, who, have, who, are, who can no longer sense God. Irritability has been removed from their characteristics of living things. If God moves, they can't feel him. If he talks, they can't hear. They can be present, but their hearing is absent. So what you need to do is to give them life. You will command breath to enter. Don't put fire on them. Fire on dry bones will make them irrecoverable. So the old time religion preached so much about conversion. And it was something that Jesus preached also. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 18. Let's start from verse 1. We'll stop at verse 3. At the same time, I want, I'm starting from here because I want you to know the audience of Jesus. Who was the audience? At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and Jesus called a little child 
unto him and set him in the midst of them his disciples and said verily I say unto you except ye be converted it means there's a kind of person that you are and in your conversion you will become as little children we will need to do a study of what little children look like little children are ever dependent ever believing ever waiting for instructions ever loving easy to forgive are you with me have you seen two three year olds fight before one takes stick and slams the other guy's head <laughs> he runs away if you leave them for another two minutes they have started molding this mud house they have started molding it again and you are wondering did they not just fight because they, are, they, they have the ease of letting go Jesus was saying there are things in your life that don't qualify for the kingdom so he said except you be converted and become as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven vocalizing your sin status will not open the gates there must be proof that you are converted you are changed now if we go into the acts of the apostles that should be acts chapter 3 we want to see how this process happens why it is because when we speak of conversion a lot of people feel that they need to write a list of the things that they used to do and the things that they should now begin to do so he says i used to lie now i will be telling the truth and what he begins to do is that he begins to struggle so you have believers who say i'm trying not to tell lies it is still you trying to operate a new operating system like the old one because in the old one it was man who was laboring to in the new one we yield into conversion in the old system we struggle into conversion so in the new one we find the agent of conversion and the agent of conversion is the one that was transmitted into your spirit the one that came in the incoming christ is god's agent of conversion if you know how to yield to him how to vocalize your helplessness in sincerity of heart you will be helped that was the design when they looked unto him their faces were lightened and they were not ashamed their expectations were met our eyes are, are upon you oh god for from you our expectations come i sang the refrain of a hymn many times some, some months ago i i don't i don't know the the verse of the hymn but i know that the chorus says only trust him only trust him only trust him now for he will save you he will save you he will save you now what key are you playing on? Opa. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah Oh yeah. Only trust him. Am I right? believe was the testimony of one who had found the pathway of coming into the experience of conversion that if you trust him now he will save you when now 
It means every time the old man at the initial stages, because the old man does not give up hope. Every time the old man wants to manifest, you will vocalize your trust. And when he hears it, the one that you trust now, he will save you now. So it will be the testimonies of change because you are helped, not because you are trying. That's the design. That's the design. So we are not saying, be struggling, be struggling. I hear a lot of people say to me, sir, I fasted, I fasted, I fasted, I fasted. You cannot come into the righteousness of God by your labor. One has gone through all the way you will need to live by him. And can I say this? The only way to live by to live for him is that you live by him. Can I say it again? The only way you will be able to successfully live for Jesus is that you live by Jesus. He will be the one who makes it possible. That's what you find in Philippians chapter 2. Give me from verse 12. I'll do 12, 13. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For, in case you think work out means try. In case you think work out means struggle. He says, for it is God, which both worketh, or which worketh in you, both to will. It means the first thing the incoming Christ does to occasion conversion is that he changes your desires. And when he has changed your desires, he gives you capacity so that you can do. Life is designed to be lived by desires. That's why he doesn't give capacity where there is no desire. But there is a posture of existence that occasions this. This work of the spirit. And that's what we want to check in Acts chapter 3. There is the how of conversion. Hi. It's almost 8 to Kai, kai, kai. Okay. It means maybe I'll just do one. And then we'll come back again and do maybe next week something. So I'll not, I'll trust God. Oh, well, I'm not very lost in that. It's because I always have an opening charge. It's, it's just his way of bringing us to activity. I don't want us to go. Around eight, I don't wonder it at it. Let everybody be home. I'll be done. I'll let everybody go to be home. Acts chapter 3 is a long reading from verse 17 to 26. We want to see the layout. Somebody is saying, hey, But Jesus is here. I've been praying, I've been fasting. I, I've said I will not watch American film again. Because that's where lust comes. If you watch Nigerian film, even if you watch, you, you watch Yoruba film. Now claim that you not watch your bad film again. You watch Ibo film. Because there's nakedness in Ibo film too. I mean even traditional Ibo films, there's nakedness there. Because the way they dress and just tie a pan, tie something at the top, there's nakedness there. If that's what weakens you, your consecration will still be weak. Are you with me? So, uh, if he says, and that's what we're going to do in the second one, that's the indwelling. If he says don't watch film again, it means that's the way to be free. But if you decide I will not watch film again, it means you are still trying to achieve the righteousness of God by yourself. It won't work. You can't choose what you will do. Man, it's beyond a man to choose consecration. They give you. Are you with me? Say I've been fasting five times a week. You'll be teen and you'll still be sinful. <laughs> Ah, I, I, well, I, I hope that this my lines are answering many questions that I get online. So I'm struggling. You say I, I decided to fast for 100 days that I will not masturbate again. Inside the 100 days, if you are sincere, there are times. And then when you now finish the 100 days, it's like your body went on, on vacation. You now resume work. And for the next one week, it will be like four or five times every day. That's why you come exasperated and you make statements like, God cannot use me again. I want to die. You will not die. The problem is that you could not save yourself. He saved you. Now you have come into the economy of life and you, you now want to use effort. 
you want to put at not the, the the cross of the Christ. He doesn't work that way. The one who saves is the one who keeps. Oh, the apostles understood that mystery. You remember that my old sermon. It is unto him who is able to keep from falling. If you see any of us standing, it's because he keeps us. I'm not trying. I'm just you. For what a fellowship, what a joy divine in on the everlasting arms, and oh, what blessedness, and oh, what peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms. So leaning, I'm leaning, safe and secured from all alarms. Leaning, I'm leaning, I am leaning on the everlasting arms. For oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path goes from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. I'm So safe and secured from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. That's the survival strategy. You must come leaning. It's a good place to round up tonight. Let me just read from Acts chapter 3. Then we come back to read this. To, to sing this song and we close. The reality for this week is that we press. To obtain in experience. That which the incoming Christ came to occasion. Is the wonder of conversion. You will find the part of, of asking. Lord help me. Lord help help me lord help me you came in to help you came in to help so help me and progressively you will see the things that you are battled with lose their power you can't win but he has won <laughs> and now brethren i want not that through ignorance ye did it as did your rulers speaking of how jesus was crucified but those things which god before had shoot by the mouth of all these prophets that Christ should suffer he had so fulfilled let's go repent therefore maybe I should stop here the, the, the apostles in trying to demystify what happened at Pentecost and by extension to make people know that by the labors of the Christ it was not just for the 120 it was something that everybody was supposed to be sucked into the gift of God that came at Pentecost was for everybody that believed they beckoned upon their brethren and said to them repent ye therefore what does he mean to repent because he said repent ye therefore and be converted what that line means is that when a man repents you have finished your human labor it's like put rice on fire put rice in water put it on fire and sit what will happen the rice will boil do you know how rice boils you know how the cells inside the rice grain used to swell it's at the mercy of the fellowship of heat and water if you sit long enough it's going to boil man's participation when christ comes in is to meet the incoming Christ 
with a posture of repentance because he comes on the wings of conviction he informs your heart that you are alienated from God he informs your heart that your life is disaligned you are supposed to meet him with a dimension of the sorrowfulness of heart that says Lord you didn't make me like this I want to do what you want me to do true repentance does not end with I'm sorry it continues into I am willing Yoruba say that repentance and I love that word it is called Ironu it means nobody repents until they have engaged rational thinking am I supposed to be lying by the information that comes from the word of God you have seen that a liar has no future you, you have marked all those things together and you come to a conclusion that Lord this is not how you made me my lips were supposed to bring forth truth I choose truth but immediately you say you choose truth you should know that you cannot speak the truth because we are not positive speakers I choose truth I choose truth I choose truth that's what some people teach I choose truth that if you say I choose truth long enough you will speak truth one day if you sit down and think through your I choose truth I choose truth you will see that even your I choose truth is a lie that in your heart of hearts you have not chosen truth I have met or spoken to many people it's, it's many times around the, the scene of masturbation the person says I'm tired I don't even like it again ah, 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 you're lying you enjoy it the pleasures you what keeps you going is that you have substituted the place of the Christ there's a new God in your heart the name of that God is pleasure and you are willing to trade your love for the Christ for self pleasure that's your problem if you they tie your hands to the wall or they put they put they put you on a cross and you are walking if your hands can't do it your heart will still do it so you need to be exposed to truth the truth of God's word truth that makes you know that that position hurts a lover I have found out that love for Jesus has won battles over masturbation more than fasting if you understand the cross and that your response is not thank you your response is I will live for you even when you feel that that's the way to go your heart is programmed in a new way many I'm sorry to God are thoughtless that's the problem the guy doesn't want to go to hell so I tell one of, many of them why, why, why do you want to quit masturbation he says it's not good you can't lie to me with ease I say the problem is not that it's not good you are afraid that next time if you lay hands on people they won't fall it's about ministry. Can I say yes, sir? That's the problem. People lie to you that you will not be strong if you continue sinning. There is a shape of ministry in Nigeria that in, in which the two cohabit. <laughs> no, if it, that is because you have not checked far. There are wicked men in ministry in Nigeria. They are more sinful than their congregation. I mean, wicked men, not seeking repentance at all. And they are powerful men prophetic men mighty miracles but they are wicked so if you think if I see much I won't, be, I won't be able to do miracles no people have pioneered that part in Nigeria people have pioneered doing ministry without meeting Jesus uh, you know the story because it's possible for people to be long in ministry have large churches have many ministry songs and they can't tell us when they consciously we don't want to know a time we just mean was there a day when you consciously gave your life to Christ they said no it happened in the womb it means that ministry can run even if you have no experience of salvation if it's because of ministry you want to quit sin no forget be doing it you will meet him like that doing ministry is a cheap is a cheap reason do you know that it was love that hung on the cross why will you say no to that kind of love the Bible says greater love had no man 
that he laid down his life for who? Do you think Jesus died for friends? The Bible says we were alienated. We were enemies in our minds by wicked works. He died for his enemies. The Bible said we that were afar. He has drawn nigh. Come on. He sits on all that God has. But now we are joint heirs with him. He has done too much for me to continue. The cross is what broke simple habits in my life. I cannot continue this way. When repentance happened, then I began to seek a solution. Because when you have repented, you will know that you still cannot win. Your mind is not strong. Your mind can't quit a habit. No, you can't quit a habit. The habit runs a technology that is superior to your mind. They must have told you, use another thing to, once the thought comes to your heart, be thinking something else. Uh, that something else was created in the earth. Everything that is created in the earth has an end. When you finish thinking that thing, you will resume. <laughs> uh, Somebody is wondering, why is he talking like that? I know the path. I didn't read it. I experienced it. But Jesus is faithful. At a point I told him, you want ministry, take it. But give me you. I know that I'm still, I still have a relationship with you. Abby. But I was saved for more than a relationship. I was saved for fellowship. You don't know the difference. My son is not in church tonight. I'm his father, so there's relationship. In, my, in our hearts, yes, there is a cry for daddy. There's a cry for my son. But you know that there's no active thing going on between us right now. That's fellowship. It's a different thing that I look back and I see him standing in the aisle waving. I remember when I went to Katsina. When I got into the house, was over in the house. I don't know, was blessing in the house. When I came back, my, my wife, me she heard the gate. She ran out. It was the first time my son greeted me like that. One of his aunties was around. I don't remember who. He made the open the door. I was still at the small gate. He screamed, Daddy! And you see, my heart caught. That boy be saying that to me. <laughs> He's missing me. That's fellowship. Even though relationship was never broken. When we misbehave, our relationship with God is not touched. The cross makes that possible. But the flow of life, which is fellowship, is damned. Oh Jesus, repent, therefore. And when you repent, be converted. Because repentance programs you for conversion. That your sins may not be forgiven, but be what? Blotted out. There's a difference between both of them. When you blot out sin, it means that the operating system ceases to exist. If you browse a web page, sometimes because I want to check out sports, sometimes I do go.com quite a lot. But after a while, I just feel like clearing my history. So going from go.com and going to biblehub.com. It would look as if BibleHub.com is the only thing on your phone. But if you go to history, you will see Go.com there. Are you with me? So if you say you are sorry to God and He forgives you, the blood of Jesus is occasioned. You are no longer guilty. But it doesn't mean that the tendency is gone. Blotting out means we go to history and we click delete history. So if somebody wants to type G-O, the only possibility you can have on that phone is Google. Because that's the most commonly used G-O. You can't have the other files. It means the possibility of recovering that state is not there. You'll be struggling to do that thing because of blotting out. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse. That's blotting out. And Peter is saying that the protocol for cleansing, for blotting out, is that a man repents be sorry into a change and then you are helped to change the sins may be blotted out 
when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of God. Next verse, and then we go back to that song. We close this service. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. This was Pentecost. An attempt to make public what happened in the room. Can you give me the last two verses of Acts chapter 3? Or last three verses. Last three verses. The Bible says, Yea, all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold these days. Next verse, Ye are the children of the prophets. And of the covenant which God made with Abraham, our father, saying unto Abraham, In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. I want to, this is the last verse I need. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. What was the blessing that the coming of Jesus occasioned? Can we read together? In turning away every one of you from his iniquities. The blessing of the incoming of the Christ does not express as only as tongues. Does not express only as the, the ability to do the miraculous. Foundationally, what it expresses as is the capacity to turn not one man but everyone into whom he comes from his iniquity it means everyone has their own allocated iniquity the one that satan allocated to them but the blessing of the incoming christ is that when we yield he ensures that everyone can turn. Everyone. Somebody say everyone. You can say to yourself, I can turn. Because Christ came in. I can turn. Because Christ came in. So this week becomes unto us a week of helps. Help me look for that hymn. And then we'll sing the whole hymn. And I will be done for tonight. The whole hymn. The whole hymn. I think it should have about four verses. Am I right? Maybe three or four. Three. Eh? Three. Good. What a fellowship. What a joy divine.
an expectation. God has a plan to see his expectation met. But the generation must come in alignment. And we say yes to Jesus. Ibarasia tabo meka baba kamande kaidatos. We will hold nothing, Jesus. You want the generation? We offer you one. Let the waitings come to an end. 